Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, I guess you've already got, got who I am, but I guess a, a boutique waste, in, um, waste consultancy um, firm. Um, yes, I'm from Tassie, but we do travel. Um, it's okay. Um, but I guess what, what, I, what we sort of done a few years ago was um, I, much to my wife's disgust, tended on um, seven sites um, in Tasmania, um, five transfer stations, two landfills. Thought I'd get none, got them all. Um, and they are sort of what we are now trying to do as our, as our showcase sites for, for, for what we're trying to preach to, to councils and community and, and the industry and, and sort of showing what we can actually achieve. But I guess food waste, food organics. Um, yes, we are trying to do the right thing, but where is it? Where is our food? And that's the critical part that I've, I've been seeing. And I've been lucky enough to do lots of waste audits around Australia um, more recently. Um, a, a lot in rural New South Wales and also in, in rural Victoria, looking at the introduction of food organics and, and how it's going. So I guess my, thought, my first thought process is what is actually happening with our waste streams. So let's get in. Um, I guess with the data thought process of, you know, is it going in the right bin? Do we create um, a, our food waste? Where does it actually go? Um, the surveys that people report on, um, their lies. Um, we know that. There's a current council that's just done a survey um, of 1,000 residents. Do you produce food waste? 82% said no. We've done an audit. They lied. Okay. But again, it's that perception of what is food waste. Is it food scraps? Or, or as we've seen by the previous speaker, in regards to that whole food or, or the bread and that that we're, we're doing. So the results certainly didn't do that. So I guess I've been able to um, collate, gather, um, work my little tush off in regards to looking at how we are doing with our food waste. So this is some data that I've gathered over 57 council audits. They're all two 40 litre wheelie bins. So around about 11,000 um, tenements, okay, over a, over a two year period. Just looking at what they're actually doing in regards to that. So we all know that if you don't have food organics, you don't have a FOGO service, that majority of your organics end up in your waste bin, okay. We all hear about a third of our bins, um, food organics or organic material that can be diverted. Here's a couple of average samples that I've been able to, um, to, to ascertain that, you know, it's still 56%, up to 64% of our waste bin is still organics. Disgusting. Okay. So then we look at our FOGO bin. Okay. So we have our FOGO bin and over those 57 audits, Okay, the average is 4.2% of the FOGO bin is food. Okay, shocked? No, I am. It's disgusting. Okay, because if I was a council dealing with a processor and I'm paying a higher rate for my FOGO bin, I'd be saying, no, I'm sorry, I'm providing you with a garden organics bin with 4.2% food contamination, okay? And I could get a cheaper price, okay? But again, 4.2% is food, okay? The lowest I had was 1%, okay? And that was probably just a couple of people throwing some random apples in, okay? And the highest was 19%, okay? So again, unfortunately, we're not getting the message out there correctly. Okay, so a waste bin with FOGO. Okay, again, based on the 57 audits that we've done. So in the waste bin, we have still got 50% compostables in there. Okay. Our food organics, when you look at it from a contamination point of view, fantastic. Okay, so the message has got through to the community the contamination in the green organics or the food organics bin, okay, it is bad, so please don't put it in. So that's getting, getting out there, around about on average about 4% contamination. Again, it's a little bit different than curbside recycling where you don't want a glass bottle in there because it breaks and it contaminates the whole load and then you have your quality issues with composting. But again, looking at that sort of process in regards to our food organics, and that's what we're offering the service for, to divert our food from landfill, of that 50%, we still have 35% that's food. So why are we offering these food organic services when they are not being utilised? 
okay? So 26% still food scraps, packaged food, whole packaged food, okay? So again, looking at those opportunities for how we do it. So how do we look at the perfect option? 1,001 different ways to skin a cat, 1,001 different ways to actually have that service to try and reduce our waste to landfill. So the two options that I've presented here today are your weekly FOGO, so you've still got 4.5%, sorry, 4.2%, that's my typo, okay, in the bin of, of food, but in your fortnightly waste you've got 32% on average. Option B, so you look at the weekly FOGO, you've even got less food. You've got 2.4% food waste and 52% food in your waste bin. So what is the perfect situation? I don't know. Do you offer a weekly FOGO service to try and get more food diverted, give them a smaller waste bin? But again, how do you go about that? A couple of clients that I've been working for of late, we've been looking at changing the message. How do we change the message on behavioural change? So contamination, everyone understands contamination. So what I've done now is I've changed the message. We are contaminating our red bin, because people get that. So you're contaminating your red bin with food waste, because it's supposed to go in the green bin. Just like we're contaminating our yellow bin, and it should be going in the red bin. So it's about changing the message in regards to what we've actually done. And everyone understands that message. I thought I'd just throw this one in here just because we're talking about food organics. To bag or not to bag? Okay. There's again a thousand and one different opportunities. Bags, no bags, no caddies, yes caddies. How do we go about it? I think it's fit for purpose because every system does work. Um, but again, the issue that I find throughout Australia is the confusion compostable, biodegradable, councils run out of bags, I've got to go somewhere else and buy them, they're cheaper, compost bags are expensive, so we just end up contaminating our loads. Again, these particular kitchen caddy bags are the perfect size for your bathroom bin. Okay, they're the perfect size. And we find on 90% of our audits that the material that's in there is from a bathroom. So again, you're looking at it from an auditing, uh, sorry, a sorting process and a quality control process that you could have medical, uh, medical waste in there, bathroom waste, aerosol cans, the works. Packaged food. Again, the next step. So we've got to get the food scraps out of our waste bin, but again, the next step is how do we get people to decant and depackage their own materials? I do it. I have a curbside food organic service and I flog it. I tip milk, I tip yogurt, I love it. Okay? I wash it out occasionally, but that's okay. It doesn't live in the lounge room with me. Okay? But again, that's the message that we've got to get through to people that you don't actually live with your, with your waste bins. They're outside. It's okay to put food in there. Okay? So, how do we increase food? Again, we all, all want to avoid it, okay, so avoidance is the best scenario in anything in regards to the waste industry. Hopefully, I've been in this industry 22 years, hopefully I eventually don't have an industry to work in, okay. If we do the right thing, okay, we won't be out there creating and making sure that we're recycling properly. But we need to avoid it in the first place. We need to educate. We also need that behavioural change. As Costa said today, storytelling, okay? We don't do it enough as industry and especially as councils. When a new service rolls out, the amount of propaganda that's out there is incredible. And it's good propaganda, okay? It's good information, it's how to do it correctly, it's how to do it, do it to the most efficient way to divert our materials. But after six months, after 12 months, there's nothing. And I guess from this particular education process, of the propaganda, we need to learn from the recycling industry. Because I do a lot of work in the recycling industry and the propaganda and the re-education in that is terrible. Because it costs too much. And that's why we have issues with contamination. So we need to make sure that we're still doing the right message. It needs to be strong and consistent. But I guess a new tact that I'm thinking of of late is that we've done all this, this, this good stuff of please divert, 
you know, this is the right bin to do it. But I think we need to start pleading with the community that we need your food, that we have a service that we have created that is costing money, but instead of it going into landfill, we need you to really be committed and to utilise that service. Gone are the days of where I don't want to put in my food or get it bin because it stinks, because you have a, have a, now have a weekly service and you now have a fortnightly waste service, so that's gone. So then you need to actually understand and plead with the community to do it. That's me. Hopefully I've answered some of your questions in regards to it or, or just re-evaluated in regards to where our food is going. Thank you.